Hello everyone, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, I will talk a little more in detail about the apply image feature in Photoshop, which seems to be a rather unknown feature, but it's very, very helpful for a lot of things here, though I do want to focus on exposure blending. That means by making use of the apply image feature, I will combine multiple exposures and thus increase the dynamic range of the image I'm working on. So without much more talking, let's start. As usual, before I can actually do the exposure blending, we want to do the base raw adjustments for our images. Down here you can see the different exposures, with this one being the middle one, this one for the highlights with no overexposure, but a lot of underexposure. And we are going to use this bright image as our base image later in Photoshop. Since here we have all the details we need in the shadows, while there is of course some overexposure. By the way, if you just want to see the apply image feature, then I suggest to check the chapters of the video. For now, let's do the raw adjustments. I'm going to do them on the middle ground image here and then later apply all the adjustments to the different exposures. So first off, I do want to change the profile to Adobe Landscape so we get some more saturation and you can see this also helps a bit with the darker areas. Then for the white balance, let's see, I think I'm going with the cloudy setting. This will warmen everything up, which is exactly what I'm aiming for since this is a golden hour shot. As we're going to do some exposure blending, I am not changing stuff like exposure, contrast, highlights and so on. Instead, I want to head straight down there to the texture and boost it just a little bit. And then I'm also increasing the vibrance. Just like that. Then we're done with the basic panel. Next up, I do want to work on the local adjustments. And as always, I'm starting with the gradiated filters. I have added one for the top part of the sky, which I want to slightly darken by bringing down the exposure. Perfect, that's it. Then there are two gradiated filters for the foreground. And with the first one, I do want to introduce some more texture and some clarity, just like that. And I want to use the second one, which you can see has a slightly different size to bring down the temperature so we get less yellow color tones in the foreground. So let's see, that should look pretty good. If not, we can adjust it later. Then there is also one radial filter, which I have placed over the tree. In this area, I do want to have some subtle glow and therefore I'm simply going to boost the blacks and drop the dehaze. Perfect, that's it. We are done with the local adjustments. Then all that's left to do is the color grading. I'm skipping the color mixer for now. I might do it later in Photoshop, but here I do want to apply some split toning. And since that's a golden hour shot, I'm also applying some golden hour light to the highlights. So somewhere in the yellow range with a little less saturation though. All right, then let's check the midtones. Again, I'm going for a golden hour color tone. Somewhere here maybe, and here again, use a low saturation. All right, then for the shadows, I want to add a little bit of color contrast, so I'm going to introduce some blue tones to the shadows. That should look pretty good, but here I'm going to use a really low saturation. Perfect. Finally, I do want to head into the calibration tab all the way down and simply drop the blue primary hue and boost the saturation here. This just adds a little more red to those yellow highlights and I think this looks pretty good in most cases. So then let's also sharpen this image real quick. Then here we have the adjustments for the first raw image. So now we do want to copy those settings to the two other images. Therefore, I'm holding down the shift key and click on the last thumbnail to select them all. Now right click on them and just hit synchronize settings, check all and hit okay. 
and here we have the settings on all three images. Now let's open them up in Photoshop. As I said earlier, I'm going to use the brightest one as the base image. On top of it I have added the middle exposure and at the very top there is the darkest exposure with all the details in the highlights. I do notice some slight movement between those layers, so before we can work on the exposure blending, I'm going to align those layers real quick, so let's select them all, go to edit and select auto align layers and just hit OK. Now let's see how the exposure blending goes using the apply image feature. First off, make sure to turn off all your darker layers. I will go through this layer by layer, so first off I'm going to blend the middle exposure and then the dark exposure. So with the middle exposure turned off, I'm going to apply a layer mask and I make sure the layer mask is selected. Then I'm going to image and simply choose apply image. I don't have to change anything here, I just click OK. Now you can see the layer mask has changed. If I alt click on it, you can see the actual mask. What this means is the darker parts of this layer mask will not be visible while the brighter parts will be blended with our base image. So let me just turn on the middle exposure. And you can immediately see we do get a way better exposed sky right there. The overexposure is almost gone but we didn't lose any detail in the shadows. So just take a look at the forest which just basically stays the same before and after. Of course you can further adjust this by working on the layer mask. For example the foreground did get slightly darker which I don't want so I'm just using a black brush and I'm just brushing over the foreground to make it slightly brighter again. We could also brighten up the center part a little bit. We might do get some overexposure, but I think that's not a big deal. It actually looks better in my opinion, but therefore I of course drop the brush opacity and then I'm just carefully painting over the brighter parts of the sky. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, of course, there is some overexposure left, but we do still have the darkest exposure. So let's just repeat that step, although I won't be using it for the final image. Keep the layer turned off, apply a layer mask, make sure the layer mask is selected, go to image, apply image and just hit OK. Then turn back on your layer and you will successfully blend those exposures together. Again, you can adjust the mask. In this case, the image got way too dark so I want to fix that. I'm just brushing over the sky here and thus I'm bringing back in some brightness. And that's how you do the exposure blending using the apply image feature in Photoshop. As I said in the intro, it's a little bit hidden in the image menu, but if you use it a few times, you will get used to it. So if you do want to see the rest of the editing for this image, feel free to stay. If not, I hope this was helpful, but let's continue. As I said, I don't want to use the darkest layer since I think the overexposure right in the center behind the tree does look pretty cool. So with those two images blended together really nicely, I'm going to merge them. Next up, I do want to work on the foreground a little bit since I think this needs to be brighter. Therefore, I'm going to add a new layer switch the blending mode to overlay and I'm going to use the TK panel plugin to create luminosity masks. In this case, I, I don't want to target the shadows of the foreground. I'm looking for something to target foliage just like the lights one layer. Let's try this one. Create a layer mask on our overlay layer and just use a white brush to brighten it up. And you can see this actually works quite good. Now we did accidentally brighten up the sky. Of course I don't want that. All right. 
So if we want to make this effect even stronger, I can simply duplicate that layer and that looks pretty cool. Let's merge everything. And I guess I do want to add another overlay layer to dodge the foreground a bit. But let's see if we can target the foliage in the foreground further. I guess the midtones would work pretty good here. Let's try this one. And again, just using a white brush here to paint over the foreground. Nice. Now with this out of the way, let's merge this once more. And of course, I do want to apply some nice glow in the center, in the bright part in the center. Uh, actually, no, let's first get rid of those sensor spots. I just noticed them. There are a few other things I can remove from this image as well. Okay, but now let's add the glow. Again, I'm creating a new layer, switch the blending mode to hard light, however, this time. And I do want to apply a slightly warm color cast to the glow. So let's see. This should be a pretty good color tone. And then let's also bring down the brush opacity, of course. And now I'm just adding the glow. All right, awesome. Then again, let's merge those two layers. So one thing I don't like is the blue tone of the sky, which I want to change. Therefore, I'm going to add the hue saturation adjustment layer. And in the drop down menu right here, I'm going to select the blues. And now I'm just playing around with the hue. And I'm trying to give it a more natural looking blue tone. Then also I'm going to drop the saturation and maybe even the luminance. All right, much better. Now let's see if I can play around with the yellows as well. And I do want to drop the green tone slightly. All right, nice. I'm merging those layers and I do actually think I can burn the sky a little bit. So I do need to apply another overlay layer and again, I want to use the TK panel plugin to select the darker parts of the sky, just like that with the darks to mask. And instead of a white brush, I'm going to use a black brush and I'm just adding some more darkness to the top of the sky. Just like that. So let's merge those two layers. And finally, let's check the Nick collection plugin. First off, let's check the polarization effect. I do think this looks pretty cool, but only on the sky. Well, let's apply it like this. And let's add one more filter. In this case, let's check out the glamour glow effect. Maybe reduce the glow, add back saturation. Okay, I think that looks cool, but I do want to remove the foreground from it, so I'm going to add a negative control point here just like that okay let's apply it like this now i do want to apply one more vibrance adjustment layer and here i just want to slightly drop the vibrance for the foreground so i'm using the layer mask to paint back in saturation for the sky just like that and here we have the finished image I hope this was interesting and helpful. If you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.